today we're in Itapecuricada Serra next to Sao Paulo to understand how cremation works. Let's check it out. I'll confess to you that I thought a lot about whether we should record this video or not because it's a subject that might bother some people. But I think there are two important things in this story. First, that people are increasingly choosing to be cremated, and we need to understand how this process works. And second, that death is part of life. It's the only thing we can be sure will happen one day. So let's face this in a calmer way. The crematorium we're going to visit started in 2006, and it has already performed more than 10,500 cremations. To follow the whole process, we got a coffin, which is empty, okay? There's no body inside here. In fact, this is an ecological coffin that was made to be cremated, so it has very few metal details, which will be removed when it goes into the oven. The body will be placed on an elevator that goes up to a ceremony room. Here, most families don't hold a wake. It's just a farewell ceremony that lasts about half an hour. At the end, the coffin goes down. It's a very important moment. It's the equivalent of placing the body in the grave if it were in a cemetery. And now begins a task that few people know about. The coffin is placed in a cold chamber at around 4 degrees Celsius before cremation. Legally, a minimum of 24 hours must pass between death and cremation. That's important because cremation destroys any evidence. There's not even DNA left afterward. If an investigation is necessary, the body remains here temporarily. But there's also the matter of the oven, which is kind of like a home oven. It needs to heat up. So when it's hot, it's important to take advantage and do a sequence of cremations. By the end of the recording, I'll still learn how to handle this cart properly. This is the oven, completely lined with refractory bricks inside, similar to a fireplace. It runs on liquefied petroleum gas, which is the same gas we use in the kitchen. The flame will come out from one spot, which is more or less at a person's chest level. That's where humans have the most mass. And the gases go to that outlet back there, at this moment inside the coffin. A refractory plate acting as an identification will be placed to ensure the body isn't switched. The plate is made of a non-flammable material. Another important thing at this moment is that the body can't have a pacemaker. Because inside this device, there's a battery that explodes inside the oven during cremation. Also, any metal accessory the person is wearing. It could be a gold tooth, an earring, a necklace. It can be cremated together, but that will depend on the family's choice. Since this is a simulation, I won't remove the metal handles from the coffin. At this point, the furnace would already be extremely hot and I would have to wear thermal protective clothing. A common question is if multiple bodies are cremated together, they are not mixed during cremation. You can see that you can't even fit two coffins inside the furnace. In fact, just to clear up any doubts, if any family member wants to witness this moment, they allow it. Everything we put in there will be burned at the same time. Coffin, clothes, lining. Since over half of the human body is water, in the first hour, the furnace remains at 800 degrees 100 to dehydrate the body. Then combustion occurs and the temperature can reach up to 1000 degrees 100. The gases released in this process will pass here in the back through a second combustion and then through some filters before being released into the atmosphere. The entire cremation can take from two to three hours depending on the weight of the body. In the end, practically only the calcine bones remain, which are as brittle as chalk and are collected in a metal box. Next, grind the remains and pack them with a refractory tag and identification seal. These are the ashes. Now these are the real ashes, it's no longer a demonstration. I thought it would be lighter, but it's actually a very dense material, mostly made of calcium. Just so you have an idea, a 90 kilogram body produces about two kilograms of ash. Each family has a unique ritual for the ashes, which can be kept in urns, scattered in nature, or even turned into a painting. Two ecological urns here really caught my eye. This one is made of fibers, you can put the ashes inside, plant a tree with it, and it will decompose. These others are made to be placed in the sea, because if we scatter the ashes in the water, they will float. 
Not with the urn. The ashes will sink to the bottom and the urn will start to decompose because it's made of a ceramic that hasn't been fired. Another option they offer are pendants that hold the ashes inside, which you can wear on a necklace. There is also the option of keeping ashes in a traditional columbarium, where the family usually sets up a tribute to the deceased, or getting a spot in a garden columbarium, where that biodegradable urn is buried. We always explain here on Manual Du Mundo that the atoms in our bodies came from the explosion of a star that one day gave rise to the solar system. In other words, we are made of stardust. And the cool thing is that today we saw this cycle continuing in practice, humans returning to nature. Since in this video we followed the whole journey of a coffin, it might be really cool for you to click on the video in the card and see how a coffin factory works.